Well, I'm from the Baboon Research Unit, which is a unit based at the University of Cape Town. And our job is to study baboons. We're primarily zoologists, so we're interested in baboon biology and baboon behavior. But because we're living in an, an ecosystem or an environment where baboons interact so often with humans, our research lends itself very well to informing management decisions and the conservation of the animals in the peninsula. There have been problems between baboons and humans as long as baboons and humans have coexisted and it's something that you see with adaptable non-human primates across the world. You often get conflicting situations when humans want to live in the same environments as baboons. People consider them to be vermin and pests. Baboons live in a troop and a troop has a hierarchical structure. So you have your alpha male who is the head of the troop at least for a time period. You have other adult males and females who are ranked below him and then you have lots of juveniles and even more infants. With the alpha male position, that position is, is temporary. You see boys dispersing from their own troop to go and move into a new one where they can establish themselves and hopefully challenge for a higher position than what they already have. Baboons in the peninsula are isolated from other populations. So across the Cape Flats, which is off to our east, there's an enormous flat area that separates this mountain chain from the next one. And that area is completely urbanized. So there's no corridor linking this natural land to the natural land on the other side of the urbanized areas. New baboons can't come into the peninsula and baboons can't leave the peninsula, which is why we have to manage them like a closed population. They're stuck here. Finding a solution to the, to the current problems we face, so high levels of human-baboon conflict, are quite multi-dimensional and are going to be quite difficult to achieve. So we have to look at it from two different angles. We have to try and manage the baboons and we have to try and manage people. I think education is probably the most important thing we can do, especially when we're trying to manage humans. So we need to ed educate both groups of humans, both the residents, the people that are here all the time, and the, the transients, the, the tourists. And for residents, that means teaching them how to keep baboons away from the urban areas, how to keep them out of the gardens and out of their homes. And for the tourists, that means teaching them to not feed baboons, that it's not okay. And that means better signage in all areas where baboons are likely to come into contact with tourists. I think we're reaching a point where we understand the baboons well enough to understand what we need to do in terms of managing people and then it's just a matter of time before things start coming together, legislation's brought in, things are managed properly, I think we will start seeing the situation improving.